Hi everyone, so today we're gonna create an Android app that connect to a non viv camera. Um, so we just have to enter the IP address, login password, click on connect, and now we can see we're connected to the camera. We got this information, is manufacturer, the model, everything else, and we are able to play the, the video stream of the camera. And here it is. So how do we create an app uh, like this one? So let's open Android Studio and create a new project. So start a new Android Studio project. We can call it on this demo for instance. Let's go with Kotlin. Empty activity will be fine. And yeah, we can leave it to main activity. First, let's add the internet permission to a manifest. That's it. Now, our app can use internet. Okay, so the first thing to communicate with the uh, Onvif uh, camera is to download the Onvif dependency. So we're gonna add it uh, to our uh, build.gradle. So that's the Onvif dependency we're gonna use for the project. And we're gonna also need OKHttp OK dependency. So let's sync now. So now in the main activity, we're able to access the dependency. So we can create a non viv device that takes as an argument an IP address, a username, and a password. That's the information about your camera. So for instance, I'm gonna connect to mine. I need to assign that to the current device uh, because the SDK use it internally. Okay, so now we have the current device. We just need to set its listener. So now we need to implement the method of the listener. So request perform. So this method will be called every time we ask OSDK to uh, send a request to the camera. And on the camera return, the result is passed. And then this method is called to indicate the activities that the result has been passed and we have the, the information in the response, in the unwith response passing in this method. Okay, so now we can retry the service. So this call is really important because it's gonna give us all the paths that we're gonna use in the next call. So for install get profile, get stream URI. They need to have special paths to work in on which path we're gonna call the camera 
and this call will retrieve it and keep them in the library we use. So it's really important to make this call before any other call, like get profile or get device information, for instance. So let's see what's the result. We can log, for instance, response that passing UI message. Okay, let's run it and see what we have. Okay, so as we can see, the URIs have been retrieved. So now we can get the device information. So if the response does to request is of type get services, then we can call the get uh, device information. Let's see what we have. Okay, so here we have the manufacturer and the model of the camera, and also the firmware version and the sale number. So now we're connected to the camera, the IP address, login and password are correct. We can get the profile, and then we will be able to get the stream URI. So LZ. We retrieve get device information, then we can get the profile. And if once we get the profile, we can do the same to get the stream URI. With, for instance, secure on device dot profile, and we can take the first one. So now we can see we have free profile retrieve and we also have a RTSP URI retrieve which is not a HTTP URI. RTSP means real time streaming protocol. It's just a protocol like HTTP but it's made specifically for streaming. The only problem we have here is we compare RTSP video with just a video view. We need to have a special component that allow us to do that. For that, fortunately, we can use VLC. Let's hide it to the Gradle and play the video. So now we know that the IP address, login, and the password are correct. So we can retrieve the profile. And once we get the profile, we will be able to get the stream URI. So if the response is of kind get device information then we're gonna request the profile And we have the result that free profile has been retried. Okay, so now let's take, for instance, the first one and get the stream we arrive from it. So same thing here. If 
we got a result from get profile. We also need a surface view to be able to display the video. Let's add one. We can remove this. Are we looking for surface? Let's add some constraint and the ID surface view will be okay. Now let's go back to the activity. So once we get the URI, we want to play it. So we will have it when the request will be completed. So all things completed, we have the URI. So here it's current device URI FTP. Uh, so is a URI is an optional, so we need to unwrap it. So let's add VLC as a dependency. So as again, we need to copy paste this line. But for this dependency, we also need to indicate where the repository is located. Let's import the proper class. That's it. And let's try to run it now. Huh. We also need to set the listener here. So we also need to set VLC listener. Here it is. And now we need to implement the method and on this method we can just show toast In this case, on complete, it means the video is loading. It takes a little bit of time, so let's do it on the long length. And if an error happens, can say.
Okay, let's try to run it. So let's see if it works now. And here is a video that is playing. 